Well, hello there. I imagine you know that insulin plays a major role in diabetes, in that insulin sensitivity is critical for overall health. That means that the less insulin needed to push nutrients into your cells, the better. And as most of that occurs with your muscles, since they gobble up substantial amounts of sugar from your bloodstream, it makes sense that you'd want to know the insulin signaling that occurs within your muscle cells. In this video, I'm going to break down how saturated fats, specifically palmitate, affect the responsiveness of your muscle cells to insulin. Remember, the more responsive, the better. But we aren't just going to see what effect there is, we'll also come to understand the mechanism for that effect, good or bad. Let's dive in. We'll get to these answers based off of a study coming from a group of researchers interested in examining the effect of saturated fat on muscle cells that have been put on a cell dish. These isolated cells, known as in vitro experiment, offer scientists information specific to muscle cells. There are advantages to isolating muscle cells in that manner, like the ability to measure the effect in muscle cells alone. But there are also some disadvantages. I won't go into all the pros and cons in this video, but if you'd like more detail, you can hop on over to my longer form video where I break all this down in more detail. That said, the researchers then exposed the muscle cells to palmitate, a common saturated fat, as well as insulin, and then measured the insulin response within the cells. This told them, and will tell us now, the effect saturated fat has on insulin signaling within the cells as they translate the binding of insulin to the outside of the cell to a communicative signal inside of the muscle cells. Now, before we get into the data, the researchers pulled one more thing from up their lab coat sleeves and manipulated some of the cells to produce more of a particular enzyme known as human glycosylase, which is an enzyme that repairs DNA. Now, why might that be important? Well, in the previous video, we discussed the effect saturated fat had on mitochondrial DNA, meaning genes that are found inside of the mitochondria. And one of the effects was an increased level of damage to the mitochondrial DNA. As a result, the use of this enzyme drastically reduced the damage done to the mitochondrial DNA. However, if this would have an effect in insulin signaling is yet to be discovered. So, there is now a condition with this enzyme highly expressed or the cells are left alone without genetic manipulation to express this enzyme more than normal. With that, let's see what saturated fat has for effects on these muscle cells. While the study moves in a different order, I'd like to begin by showing you some data from later in the study, which will set for a better foundation with which we can create a better narrative. Uh, in the sizable amount of information I threw at you, I mentioned that if a person is highly insulin sensitive, their cells will bind to insulin and allow a significant amount of blood sugar into the cells. The researchers decided to test this by exposing the cells to saturated fat, palmitate, and to insulin with or without the overexpression of the aforementioned DNA repairing enzyme. Then they measured the amount of a sugar-like compound, 2-deoxyglucose, that was taken up by the muscle cells. As indicated, without palmitate but with insulin, the cells took up more glucose, which is predictable. However, with palmitate, the cells took up less glucose when exposed to the same amount of insulin. Full disclosure, the researchers should have run statistics between the control or the non-palmitate exposed cells and the palmitate exposed cells without insulin, because it sure looks like the palmitate stimulated glucose uptake to a greater degree without insulin. What's really interesting here on top of the palmitate effect is the recovery of glucose uptake when the DNA repair enzyme was present. So something is going on here as we'll delve into, but for now you should know that palmitate reduces the effectiveness of insulin. Okay, so one question you might have is how? And the researchers took some time to investigate that as well. First, they measured a protein that is directly affected by insulin binding the muscle cell. So normally, if your muscle cells are bound by insulin at the insulin receptor, there's an activation of a protein just under the surface of the cell 
This protein is called the insulin receptor substrate. The more of IRS that is activated, known as phosphorylation, the more communication will occur inside the cell, telling it to allow more glucose in. So the more phosphorylation of IRS, the more insulin signaling, and it is assumed there's more insulin sensitivity. As we can see, when insulin was added, the palmitate exposed muscle cells had lower levels of total IRS, but they also had less phosphorylation of IRS. This was, however, yet again recovered when the DNA repair enzyme was expressed. So in honesty, the researchers are missing a piece of data, a control here. But if you'd like to hear more on that, I'd again encourage that you check out the deep dive video so I don't go off the, on, well, onto a tangent here. So that is a single piece of evidence, yet without drilling this into you too much more, a similar effect was experienced when looking at another downstream protein known as AKT. The greater the phosphorylation of AKT, the greater the chance the signal is translating from the insulin receptor to the actual change within the cell. And again, AKT activation or phosphorylation was reduced with palmitate, yet recovered when the enzyme was expressed. This was all further confirmed in measures of the actual proteins that allow glucose into the cells. Consistently, it followed the same effect, palmitate reduced insulin signaling. Now, hopefully I haven't overwhelmed you with too much data, but uh, all of this leads to the conclusion that the saturated fat palmitate reduces insulin signaling, which thereby reduces the amount of sugar that is able to enter the muscle cells indicating reduced insulin sensitivity. These effects are mediated by reduced amounts of the downstream signals within the cells like IRS, AKT, and reduced activation of these signals through phosphorylation. It is entirely possible and is alluded to here that the health of mitochondria and genes that they house are major players in all of these effects. And speaking to that, I spoke on it briefly, but if you want to know the effect saturated fat has on your muscle mitochondria and why it might matter, well, check out the video that I released on the topic. Or if you want to know if all these negative effects are true for all fats or only select fats, then check out my video comparing saturated fats to unsaturated fats. And I'll hope to speak to you then. Bye.